My name is Morgan Johnson and I'm going to be teaching this environmental geochemistry course. I'm very excited about this. As a geologist, it's one of my favorite sub-disciplines uh, within geology. It's what I was always drawn to whenever I was tasked with formulating an undergraduate and also graduate research project. Um, it's always geochemical in nature. And then also this is the one that I've done the most work in. And so I think it's it's a it's fundamental to understanding, first of all, the world around us. Uh, but absolutely, if we're talking about uh, geology and most particularly um, problems of an environmental nature. So what is environmental geochemistry? Why is it important? Why study it? Why should you take this course? Why not? But so uh, geochemistry broadly, um, just without the environmental part of it, is the study of the earth, uh, the earth systems, and the chemical and elemental composition of these systems. So just kind of generally speaking, we're talking about the hydrosphere, that's all the water on earth, in lakes, rivers, streams, oceans, and then in groundwater. We're talking about the atmosphere, and then we're talking about the lithosphere. Within the lithosphere, obviously we have some elements, and these elements form to make minerals and then rocks. So not only are, are we trying to characterize the, the chemical makeup or the elemental makeup of all of these um, all of these systems on Earth. We're also trying to understand the chemical behavior of these constituent pieces um, because it's very important to understand um, how these systems will change over time and how they will interact with other systems. And so, environmentally, we're concerned most with the with the impact on the environment. And so, geochemistry. Environmental geochemistry. We study processes, contents, and distribution of the chemical elements in the natural materials of the systems that I just mentioned. And um, one of the one of the really great things I think, uh, from an environmental standpoint, that geochemistry can do is that it can tell you if you're trying to characterize an environment and you're looking at it, is is this the environment in its natural state, or is is this the result of anthropogenic activity? I mean, always it's a combination of the two, but if you're trying to, to understand whether an area or, um, or a certain situation, whether it's been the result of anthropogenic activity or whether it's been perturbed significantly, um, from an anthropogenic standpoint, um, you, you need geochemistry. Geochemistry can tell you that. It's, it's not just a function of if we put this um, piece A or component A into the environment, um, what is the result be? And so it's it's not that simple. And so you first you have to understand what the natural state is. And so environmental geochemistry can give that to you. And so it's it's certainly very cool. Um, there are implications just across the board for for the principles in environmental geochemistry. And so also it's important to to take into consideration the biogeochemical processes at Earth's surface and the interactions between um, the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the lithosphere, and also the biosphere. So what, what impact does the biology have um, on an area? And so um, biogeochemical cycling of nutrients and pollutants, that's something that environmental geochemistry is concerned with. Um, the geochemistry of rocks, soils, sediments, and regolith. Um, this is important. First, you have to be able to characterize the um, the natural aspects of this in an area if you're going to try to understand what the anthropogenic impact is. Um, so, focuses on groundwater systems and groundwater. Uh, what are pollutants? How do they travel? How do they get in there? How do you fix it um, once you have a problem? And so, uh, remediation is a big deal. Um, remediation of degraded and contaminated industrial sites and landscapes. I've done a lot of work in this. Um, it's it's certainly an area that um, has become it's emerging as um, as a very popular discipline. So um, then the hum the impacts of human activities on biogeochemical and physical processes. Um, so remediation of degraded soil also. Um, so throughout throughout this course, we're going to be talking about several different things. Um, we're going to be we're going to be talking about some basic fundamentals of chemistry that we need to be able to move forward. Um, so atoms, chemical bonding, reactions, and minerals. Then we're going to be discussing the global environmental systems that I just discussed: lithosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere. Uh, what are the characteristics of these things? What is what is the chemical behavior 
of the constituent pieces and the things that make up these systems and what implications that has for interactions with other systems and at Earth's surface and throughout other systems and other processes. Um, redox reactions and biogeochemistry, it's very important, cannot be understated. So redox reactions, what, what impact it does play? Um, how do how does the how do the impacts of redox reactions change throughout seasons? Because um, that's a big deal. The so carbon chemistry and global carbon cycles, um, soils are very important, obviously. Um, and then the chemical weathering, contamination, and remediation of soils, groundwater contamination and remediation, um, isotopes, both radiogenic and stable. Um, I think this is one of the one of the most powerful tools. If, if you ask me what the what the most powerful tool in environmental geochemistry is, I would tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, stable isotopes. They're actually incredibly interesting, and uh, if you'd like to know more, you can take this course. So, and then we'll be talking about global climate, and so probably most importantly, we'll be discussing environmental geochemical applications and case studies. So, once we have a good um, good grasp of the fundamentals and we understand some of you know, a lot of these things in further detail. Um, why does it matter? Well, it matters because we want to be able to go out into the world and apply these geochemical principles um, to environmental problems and environmental situations. And so, so anybody who does anything outside, um, obviously anybody who's going, going, going to work in an environmental um, sort of job or sector really needs a, a good understanding of environmental geochemistry. So. The environment and the world around us, it's very important to preserve it. It's and in order to be able to do that and in order to be able to characterize problems within it, you have to have some good grasps of, of the fundamentals of environmental geochemistry. So we'll be talking about um, real life case studies where geochemistry has been utilized to characterize and solve a problem. Um, what are some of the best practices and protocols? What are some of the methods? And um, that's just the tip of the iceberg and so there's going to be lots of other really cool stuff that we're covering i'm very excited to teach this class and i hope to see you there <laughs>